Welcome back, folks. Again, the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. My guest today is uh, Senator Rod Monroe, right here in the Portland metropolitan area. He's been he's been he's been very very active in politics and just public service for a number of number of years. In fact, what I'm going to do I'm going to, I'm going to spend a little moment or two before we get into some other discussion and just kind of go back in time and and ask him just how long he's been he's participated and and why he's been participated as long as he has. Okay, Rod, right, let's, let's give, give give the folks an opportunity to know how involved. First, when did you get, first get involved in politics and why? Well, I first got involved as an activist in the neighborhood association when I was about 30 years old. Here in the Portland area? Here in the Portland, Richmond Neighborhood Association, Richmond, okay. Southeast Portland. Okay. Um, and at that time, they were looking at building the Mount Hood Freeway. Now, the Ma and they were even buying up land, and the Mount Hood Freeway would have just ripped a, a, a mile-wide devastation through inner Southeast Portland out to um, I-205. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that the Mount Hood Freeway was a freeway to Mount Hood. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It was a urban freeway that would have gone from the Markham Bridge to I-205 at about Foster. Wow. Uh, and the neighborhood associations very strongly opposed that. Um, the mayor at that time, Frank Ivancy, was a strong proponent of it. Young city uh, councilor named uh, Neil Goldschmidt was opposed to it. Okay. And so the neighborhood association, because they knew I was a teacher, they figured I could talk. Uh, and so they sent me down to talk to the mayor and city hall and to testify on behalf of the Richmond Neighborhood Association. That was my start in politics. That was your start in politics. That was. And I was, I was uh, very disturbed, I remember, because of the way the mayor treated some citizens that came to testify, people that didn't have an education or a that were shy, or that were really mm -hmm. almost trembling when mm -hmm. they were little old people that just didn't want their homes torn up. Mm -hmm. And he he abused them, verbally abused them, and that really troubled me. And I thought, man, if you're if I was ever elected to public of public office, I wouldn't treat people like that. Mm -hmm. That was awful. Well, you know, a little later, I was encouraged uh, to run for the legislature. I ran. Uh, I was 31 years old in, in 1974 against a well-known incumbent, and um, there was six in the race. I came in second. Well, second doesn't get you too far in politics, okay. but it told me that I, I definitely had a future because I really did very well, and I learned some things about the way I ran my campaign uh, so that two years later when I ran against the same incumbent, again in a field of above six, uh, I was overwhelmingly elected. Um, and um, basically I've served in public office ever since. I was elected to the House twice and then to the Senate and then uh, twice and then four times to the Metro Council, uh, three times to the David Douglas School Board, then back to the Senate, elected twice, two four-year terms, and in the meantime elected also to the Mount Hood Community College Board. So I've held public office almost, almost entirely since uh, first being elected in 1976. I know you're married. I mean, are you... Oh, you... uh, yeah. My wife is a retired teacher, day school administrator, and very good bookkeeper, uh, very careful with money, and very careful, and she manages my office and does a super job I of it. I know she does. And uh, she's worked really hard over the years to make our family successful. I always tell people that she'd rather save money than spend it, she saves money and I invest it, and so we've done all right. We have a substantial apartment business uh, out in East, uh, East County that's doing very well. And in a month, we will celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary, wow. and we're going to go on a cruise of the Mediterranean. Wow, I have a good time. We will. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to get a feel for who I'm interviewing today. I've been, I've been interviewing for a number of years, and, and Rod has always been an asset because, like I said, the one thing you'll show that he does represent people. He's not selfish in any way, shape, or form, and uh, he speaks his mind, and, and, I, and I think that's, that's a good thing about, uh, about someone like him. He happens to be a politician. He's not a politician. And I, I want to make sure I make that clear. Okay. Thanks, okay. Bruce. All right. Now, let's get back into some of the other issues. I think from a local standpoint, I'm thinking about uh, here in the Portland metropolitan area, 
uh, the issue of our youth, if you will. I mean, I, yes. you know, we've talked a little bit about yes. that, the whole issue of gangs and this, that, and the other. To me, they're still youth. It's unfortunately yes. we've got we've listed them and categorized them in this particular. Yes. They're they're youth, and yeah. and uh, you know, some would say that the education system was was part of the issues yeah. aspect of it. The whole issues we're having, where where a number of young people are having kids. Yep. If you will, and uh, they have nowhere to go. We right. got the, we got the immigration issue aspect right. of it. That's another issue that we, yes. you know, these kids are left here by themselves. The states have to take care right. of them, and so, so, is the legislature looking at the possibility of, of trying to get involved in those issues to try to see what can we do to resolve? Because it's it's, a, it's having quite an impact on our criminal justice system, as you know. It takes quite a chunk of money. If you right. will, oh, in sure that deal. Does. What, what what are you all doing about that yeah. particular issue? The, the most issue. expensive way to take care of troubled youth mm -hmm. is to put them in prison. Okay. By far the most expensive, sixty thousand dollars a year per kid. That's there ought to be a better way. Mm -hmm. Now we looked at a number of pieces of legislation. You mentioned immigration. Mm -hmm. um, there are young people in our city that were brought here as babies by their parents who were undocumented. And so they, and they were not born in this country, but they grew up and they lived in this country and they went to our schools. And we passed a bill uh, through the Senate, although it died in the House, that said if they have done well in school and gotten good grades and graduated from our high school and they're on a path toward citizenship, that they ought to be able to enter our colleges and universities at in-state tuition rates, not pay like they were from New York or someplace but in state, the same kind of tuition rates that your kids or my kids would pay. Uh, unfortunately, that bill didn't pass through the House. But immigration reform is something I'm very interested in. The other thing is, though, Bruce, most of these young people have a drug problem, are involved in substance abuse in some way. Uh, and finding treatment, community treatment facilities that help them get over and get past their drug addiction problem, uh, whether it be alcohol or methamphetamine or cocaine or whatever, uh, is a much more efficient way to deal with them, to help them get, their, get a leg up to a productive life rather than just throw them in prison uh, at the tremendous expense. Uh, we spend more on incarceration per population than any other state. We don't lock up more people, but we have a more expensive system, and we do spend more. Um, that troubles me a lot. Do you see a light at the end of the tunnel on this piece? Look like it's just escalating. Well, isn't it? you know, the light at the end of the tunnel really is to start when they're born. Right. Okay. Uh, and to do a better job of providing services to to women that are pregnant, and then once the once the child is born, uh, to to give that child every opportunity in the zero to five age group. Uh, the other thing is a lot of uh, young women that are still in high school are having babies. So when I was on the David Douglas School Board, we instituted a teen parent program right across the street from the high school. A teen parent program was a Head Start program. These young girls, 15, 16 years old, could put their child in that program where they got excellent care, could actually visit them during the day if they wanted to, to nurse or whatever or just to visit them. And meanwhile, they could stay in school and graduate from high school instead of becoming wards of the state for the rest of their lives. So those are the kind of programs that I strongly support, I've always supported. Now, I did get in some, pro some trouble with some of the folks in my church. I'm a deacon in my church. I've been real active in my church all my life. And I got in some trouble with some of those folks who said that I was promoting premarital sex. Mm -hmm. And I, my answer was, well, I think the premarital sex already took place. Yeah. I'm just trying to deal with the consequences. <laughs> that's, that's another area that I, I think that people would be very interested in. As you know, the mental middle, middle health thing, is, is yeah. the mental illness thing, that's a, that's a major thing yeah. within the, in, metro, in any metropolitan area. It's huge. When I think back, when I go back, I think about damage. Yeah, you know, yeah, and then yeah. when, when a person got in that kind of a situation, mm -hmm. they had a place that was sort of a control environment. Yeah, they gave them the pills, you know. Yeah. That, but in today's system, is that uh, our entire community yeah. is 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 damaged, if you will, yeah. and then they're they're now basically it's on their own. They get yeah. the pills. In some cases, we've been hearing about they get the pills and they sell them. Yeah, right on the judgment. What, what are we doing? About They're that? out on the street. Yeah. What, what do we do? What we, we any discussion on mental we, health? Mental yes, health we've totally underfunded community health programs. We okay. need more 
community-based mental health programs to give these people um, the opportunity they need to get their life in order, provide them with the medications they need, uh, treatment they need, or whatever, to get their lives in order. Uh, otherwise, they become derelicts on the street, they commit petty crimes, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we lock them up. That isn't the answer. Um, and then, of course, we have the whole issue of returning veterans. A lot of these are fairly young people, still in their you know twenties. Suicide rate among our returning veterans is more than double what it is among the population in general. It's a crime, really, the way we treat our returning veterans. Mm -hmm. They ought to be given every opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I said, well, you know, if they could get in a, a training program at a community college, if they could get some education so they could get a good job, they'd be less likely to get involved in drugs or alcohol abuse be less likely to commit suicide. So I found out that this, the federal government had a program, a sort of a new GI Bill, uh, that would pay for their education, but only after they have completed a term. So they would have to find the money to upfront the money hmm. to pay for the first term of college. And then after they completed it successfully, federal government would reimburse them. Well. I got the David, uh, excuse me, David Douglas. I got the Mount Hood Community College Board, I've served on both, uh, to pass a, re a resolution that will pay returning veterans for their first term, pay their tuition free, mm. free tuition for their first term. Once they get that free tuition for their first term, feds reimburse them and they're on their way. Oh, okay. Was that done? It's a Pass? great program. Yes, Pass? it's in it's wow. in effect, wow. and we quadrupled the number Pass. of returning veterans that signed up at Mount Hood Community College. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, you know, as you know, part of my background is how I came. It was as a, a, a marine a marine recruiter, mm -hmm. right? Remember that one from Vietnam? I spent some time, and uh, New Neptic is how we had a draft. Yeah, I remember that. And draft. folks went to boot camp. Yeah. Got me, and uh, everybody had to go, yeah. so to speak. But unnaturally, under these new wars of Afghanistan, the yeah. Iraqi war aspect of it, we, we, we didn't have a draft. Right. And so we all pulled from the National Guard. In most cases, those folks yeah. don't have backgrounds that, right. like I've had. And yeah. as a result, they got thrown in that whole situation. Yeah. And it, it, that was very dramatic. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and so I, that's when I felt that that was some of the major causes, if you will, yeah. of some of the problems we're having here. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so where are we now with, uh, with and when I'm thinking about the, again, the, here, another piece I want to throw on the table to you is the whole issue of education. You know, you got to have jobs. Yep. It's one thing to be educated and yep. get the degree, but where are you going to oh, work? Oh, yeah. What do we, what do we, have you have any discussions about creating jobs for this state? Well, absolutely, Bruce. We passed a number of legislation. One that, that I think of, right, is the, the Cool Schools Act. Okay, Cool Schools Act. Cool okay. Schools okay. Act okay. basically provides state bonded money for schools to retrofit uh, for weatherization, for uh, seismic upgrading, uh, paint, roofs, et cetera, to upgrade school buildings, mm -hmm. which creates jobs, mm -hmm. a lot of jobs. So you, you outreach and also, to employers too, right, basically by doing it. it. it, it uh, this is a, a program that we work with the, the various labor unions and okay. industries that provide okay. uh, these employees, and it provides jobs in the construction business, which has been in serious decline mm -hmm because housing has been way down right. lately. So the very people that That's need the jobs the worst, exactly. this provides that opportunity for them. You know, it's funny, I, I have watched what happened starting in like 08 when the recession really hit hard. And I'm on the Mount Hood Community College Board and I had people coming to me and saying, you know, Rod, I just lost my 20th century job. 